What's going on guys? Today we are going to be talking about the most essential steps that you need to take each and every time you launch a new Webflow site to ensure that that site has the best chance to get ranked on Google. Let's get started. What's going on guys? Peyton Smith here and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your Webflow business, make sure to click below to subscribe. I've got new videos coming out each and every week. Now as designers, oftentimes we can waste all of our energy on the design, the development, and the launch of a new website. And we easily forget the little things that can make the biggest difference for that website, one of which being SEO. Now there are a number of steps that need to be taken in order for our Webflow site to have the best chance not only to get recognized by Google, but to get rewarded by Google in the form of high rankings on the search engine. Now, without wasting any time, I wanna dive right into all the things that you need to make sure are done to ensure that this can happen. Now, to start out, we're gonna talk about the changes that need to be made within the designer of Webflow. And the first of those is having correct H1 through H6 structure. Now, this is something that a lot of you probably know, and I hope that a lot of you are already doing this, but just as a quick refresher, you wanna make sure that your H1 is your main title and your main idea of your website, and that is gonna be the very top of the page, front and center, right? That H1 is what Google is gonna look at first to determine what this page is about. Next, you're gonna go down from most important, which is your H1, to your H2, your H3, all the way through your H6, and each of these titles is going to make it easy for Google to crawl through and see what's the most important idea and then what are the sub ideas. And this is gonna make it much, much easier for Google to understand exactly what it is that your website is trying to convey. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get into the individual settings of each page. And what we're gonna do is create a title tag and a meta description that correlates with the idea of that page. Now, the thing that we don't wanna do is be reusing the same title tags and meta descriptions for each and every page because Google doesn't like this and more than likely you're gonna get penalized for that. And so what we need to do is determine what was our main idea that we use in our H1, and we're gonna to wanna to use that same keyword or keyword phrase in our title tag. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the meta description is geared more towards our potential site visitors and does a great job of conveying exactly what they're gonna get when they click on our website. Now, if you have any experience with keyword research, you're easily gonna be able to get in and determine what keyword you wanna use for each title and each H1. However, if you don't have any knowledge of keyword research or you don't wanna go through the hassle of that, the good part is, is more than likely you're gonna be able to determine what that keyword should be on your own. For example, if I have a client that's a law firm in Salt Lake City, Utah, I'm probably gonna to wanna to use that phrase, law firm Salt Lake City, Utah, as both my H1 for my homepage and my title tag for my homepage. And that's gonna make it easy to tell Google exactly what it is that we're trying to get done. Finally, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have clear navigation structure. And what this means is obviously we wanna have our links up in our navigation, whether that's a drop down or whether they're visible links. And the same thing with the footer, we're gonna make sure that we have navigation links to each individual page, and this is gonna make it easy for Google when they crawl this site to make it out to all of the individual pages. Don't make it difficult to find pages. And the other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is, if at all possible, use text links throughout the site. Now, Google loves text links. So for example, in a paragraph, if we're talking about a specific service we offer, we're gonna to wanna to hyperlink the text that talks about that service, and that's gonna to link to our additional service page. Now what this does is it allows Google, as they're crawling down, to start shooting off to these additional pages, and the text that's hyperlinked is gonna tell Google exactly what that page should be about. And this is a great way to allow Google to get out to all of your pages, understand your content, and, and hopefully be able to understand and list each individual page properly from your website onto Google search. Now, once we've made all these changes within the Webflow designer, we're gonna to wanna to go to our Webflow site settings dashboard. And there are a number of different settings that we're gonna to wanna to make sure we have correct in order to get our rankings as good as possible. And the first thing we're gonna do is go right over to the hosting tab and scroll all the way to the bottom. And these are really important things that um, oftentimes as designers, we don't even look at or maybe don't even understand but you're gonna see these options, minify HTML, minify CSS, and minify the JavaScript. And this is a great way for us to instantly increase the performance of our website. 
And what this does is it reduces load times and bandwidth usage on the website. So this minification dramatically improves our site speed, our accessibility, and that directly translates into a better user experience for the people coming to our website. And so this is a great way to just crank up the performance on this site um, and make sure that it is performing as, as quickly and as, as smoothly as possible. Once we've done that, we're gonna hop over to our SEO tab. And what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we've disabled our subdomain and enabled our auto-generate sitemap. So if you're not sure what this does, a sitemap essentially just notifies Google of the different URLs on your site and allows Google to more easily crawl through those different pages and URLs of your website, okay? Now, if we don't auto-generate this, um, I'm pretty sure Google still goes through and eventually lists your site, but the nice part about doing this manually is if we can enable this auto-generate sitemap, what we're gonna be able to do is go into something called the Google Search Console and manually request that Google crawls our website right now. Now, the benefits of this is I've had times where I don't um, request this crawl from Google and it can take upwards of three, four, five weeks for Google to get around to recognizing that there's a new website and eventually crawling that. And I've even heard experiences where Google never crawls that and never lists a new website because the search console was not used. And so what we're gonna wanna do once we auto-generate the sitemap is we're gonna wanna publish our website and then we're gonna go over to Google Search Console. You can type in Google Search Console um, just in a regular Google search, and that's gonna pull up this tool. And this is a free tool that Google encourages you to use to improve the performance of your website. Now, once you've signed in, you're gonna click on the top left and add a property. You're gonna click your URL prefix and add in the URL of your website and click continue. And then this is gonna give you a number of different ways for you to be able to verify that property. One of the easiest ways to do this is just clicking the HTML tag, copy and pasting this over into the settings of your Webflow site. Just under the custom code, you copy and paste that and you're gonna be able to verify that property. Now, once you verify this ownership, there are a ton of different things that you're gonna be able to do within this dashboard, one of which is monitor the performance of your website. And that's something that we can get into in another video. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is on this left side, click down to the sitemaps tab. And right here, you're gonna see the option to add a new sitemap. Now, from clicking that auto-generate sitemap on your Webflow settings, that has done all of the heavy lifting for us. So all we're gonna to have to do in this um, input area is type in sitemap.xml and submit that. Now once that's submitted, they're gonna notify you that that will be crawled and that will be notified if anything goes wrong. But once this crawl is completed of the sitemap, you're gonna be able to see if there are any major warnings that Google's giving your site, any ways that Google might be penalizing your site. But most of all, this is the best way to notify Google that there is a new website or new pages in a website. And it's the quickest way to get Google to crawl those, acknowledge those new pages and get them ranked on Google. Now, once all these things are done, obviously there is a ton more that can be done to increase the ranking of our site. But if you've gone through all of these individual steps and made sure that you've done them correctly, this is gonna be the best way to not only get acknowledged by Google right off the bat, but to set a great baseline for everything else that you're gonna do in the future to hopefully get ranked on the first page. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions on SEO for Webflow or just SEO in general, make sure to comment down below. I'll be quick to answer those questions and I look forward to catching you in the next video.